I'm going to demonstrate the examination of a normal patient. I'm not going to show anything of abnormalities. The examination starts when you first meet the patient. Watch how he walks, how he talks, what sort of person he is, what sort of personality. Introduce yourself. I'm Dr. Cookson. Uh, how do you do? Hello, Mr. Wade. I'd like you to take your shirt off and lie upon the couch. I observe how he does this. Any clumsiness? Any pain? Does he get breathless doing this? I make him comfortable. I keep him warm. It's important to uh, keep the patient warm, but to cover, uncover each part as required. I start examining the hands. This is a natural maneuver and helps the patient to relax. I begin by looking at the tips of the fingers for clubbing. I look first for any bulbous formation of the tip of the fingers, and if that's not there, I look at the angle of the nail, the angle that the nail makes with the nail bed. There's the nail, and there's the nail bed, and I'm looking for the angle between them, which is best seen against a white background. If that angle is filled in, that's an early sign of clubbing. It's quite normal here. If that's not present, then I can look to see if there's any fluctuation of the nail bed. Can I rock the nail on the nail bed? And that's an early sign of clubbing. Then I can look at the nails, and I can look for splinter hemorrhages. Distal splinters or little black lines are of no significance and occur in manual workers. But more proximal splinters occur in infective endocarditis and are a good sign. Then I can look at the proximal interphalangeal joints for Heberden's nodes, bumps on these joints here and they're a sign of osteoarthritis. I can then look at the other joints to look for any stiffness or deformity or swelling to see if there's any pain or tenderness or movement. I can look at the wrists to see if there's any swelling or thickening of the synovial membrane. I can also look for color changes in the nails. I can look for anemia, although that's an unreliable sign in the nails, and I can look for cyanosis. And if that was present just in the nails, that would indicate peripheral cyanosis. I can then turn the hand over and look for color changes in the palm of the hand. I'll be looking particularly for any redness of the hands, which might indicate liver disease. And I can also look for Jupiter's contracture, which is a thickening of the palmar fascia. This is not present. I can then look at the patient's face. And in particular, for any color changes. I can look first for jaundice. Can you look up at the ceiling? As seen in the sclera under a natural light. And I can then look at the mucous membranes. Can you put the tongue out? And I look for paleness, suggesting anemia, or cyanosis. And in this context, cyanosis would suggest central cyanosis, disease of the heart or lungs. I can then look for lymph nodes. And I can feel from the front, but better to feel from the back. I need to relax the patient's hands well and get his shoulders well relaxed. I can then feel for the cervical nodes. Small cervical nodes are commonly present and of no significance. 
I can feel for occipital nodes. But most important, I must feel for supraclavicular nodes. And I must get my fingers well behind the anterior ends of the clavicles and underneath the sternomastoid tendon. Supraclavicular nodes are always pathological. While I'm here, I can feel for the thyroid. I can feel both sides of the thyroid gland. Then I can feel for lymph nodes in the axillae. I need to have the arm well relaxed, my fingers well up in the armpit, my fingers against the chest wall, pull down and feel the lymph nodes. For this side, I need my hand well up, the arm relaxed, fingers against the chest wall and let the lymph nodes slide under my fingers as I bring it down. And then I can look at the ankles for swelling and in particular for edema. And if I can press underneath, behind the medial malleolus, if I can produce indentation in that area, then that indicates edema. And that's not present. And then I can go on to examine the next system. 